Hey guys, and welcome back to part 2 of the series on breeding African cichlids. In the previous video, I covered some stuff you should know before breeding, and so for this video, we are now ready to talk about setting up and choosing your tank and fish, and the water parameters. The setup is perhaps one of the most important things to get right, not only to breed African cichlids, but to also keep them properly. Welcome to the world of crams and stay tuned for the full guide on how to breed African cichlids. Mumbunas, peacocks and hats. These all live in slightly different types of environments in the wild, but of similar water parameters, of high pH of around 8 or so, and hard water. You can easily achieve this by using cichlid buffers whenever you change the water. However, a more natural approach would be to use coral sand substrate and rocks that buffer the water up over time. As a result, the setup of my breeding tanks consists of coral sand substrate and a couple pieces of large rock for the fish to hide in. It's best not to add too much into the tank as it will be a lot harder to catch the fish, which you'll need to and I'll explain why in the later videos. You can also do a simpler setup of only using a bare bottom tank and a ceramic flower pot as a decoration, and this will also work fine. Next up, we have the filtration. The three most common types of filters I have seen being used are sponge filters, canisters, and sumps. And these are what I would recommend, but generally, all filters will work fine. Sponge filters are by far the most simplest and cheapest option, and just having a couple large ones in a tank is enough for a colony of fish. However, you may need to add more depending on the amount of fish you have. Sumps and canisters are also great because they are able to hold a lot more filtration media which means you can have more fish and ultimately more breeding. Besides a light, which can be any type, and a heater, there isn't anything else you will need as the most simpler the setup is, the easier it is for you. With this covered, we can now talk about the tank size and how I calculate what size of tank is needed. Out of the main three types of cichlids in Lake Malawi, there is a difference in the range of sizes, with Mumbunas being the smallest and Haps being the largest. However, there is one general rule on the tank size needed in order to keep and breed them, and this applies to all types of cichlids. In order to calculate the size of your tank needed, you first find the adult length of the fish you want to keep in inches and divide this number by 2. This new number is now the minimum number of feet for the length of your tank needed. The other dimensions such as height and width can just be the standard sizes for those lengths because they are not as important. For example, if we were to apply this rule to a Mumbuni species like electric yellows, their maximum adult size is around 6 inches. So that means the length of the tank needed will be a 3 foot tank, which is around a 40 gallon size tank. On another fish like front hoses, with adults reaching 12 inches long, I recommend a 6 foot tank to breed them. This method is the easiest way to tell how big of a tank you would need to breed your fish, although some people would go for smaller size tanks. Generally, it's always better to go bigger as we will also get to add more fish and this brings us to our next topic, the breeding fish. Unlike other fish that may breed in pairs, African cichlids breed best in a colony. For a smaller tank, like a 40 gallon size breeder, I would just keep one colony from 5 to 12 fish. The bigger your tank and more filtration you have however, the more fish you would be able to fit. So you could fit two or more breeding colonies in the same tank. Additionally, you would want to have as many females as possible, with three being the minimum as that increases the amount of breeding that can happen. Personally, I would just stick with one male, unless you can keep a few or multiple, as having two in the same tank will most likely result in one being beaten up the whole time. If you have a display tank or something, you can have some males reserved, as if one doesn't end up breeding, you can just switch them around. 
So with this covered, how do you actually get the breeding colony in the first place? There is two options for this. Either buy a breeding colony of someone or buy multiple juveniles from different lines. If you choose the first option, make sure to know the sex ratio of the colony and you can double check it by venting, which I have covered in the previous video. This is very important as you would want more females compared to males and imagine if someone sold you 10 fish that were all males. If you choose the second option and decide to buy multiple juveniles, you can vent them at around 6cm or so. The fish you select can now form a young breeding colony and will start breeding soon if not already. With the other fish, you can either sell or put them in a separate tank. We have now covered everything you should know about the breeding colony, tank setup and size. If you have any questions, just comment below, otherwise click on the link in the description for part 3 on how to breed African cichlids. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe as it will help me out a lot. Thanks for watching.